Hello everybody, good to be back. Real quick, I want to let everybody know Chess Audiobooks is on LiveChess.com or LeeChess.com. Also on um, Chess.com, same name is here, Chess Audiobooks. So if you want to uh, be my friend or play me in a game there, I'll be glad to uh, play you and take on all comers. I'm also on Instagram and uh, Twitter. Today we're going to be looking at a game from 1990. From Grandmaster uh, Lev Pisakis, um, uh, who was born um, in Russia, I believe, uh, in a um, town called Kalinin at the time. I think they changed the name uh, since then, but I, I can't remember. But it was called uh, Kalinin. Um, he now is an Israeli uh, Grandmaster, but um, his um, his career is basically he won the Soviet championship uh, twice. So in 80, I think 1980 and 81, sorry I'm going off the top of my head, but 1980 and 81, I believe, um, he became a international master in 1977 or 78 and, no, I'm sorry, international master 1980, 82 uh, grandmaster. And at his peak, he was number seventh in the world. So that's who has uh, the white pieces. Um, he's now like a trainer, um, you know, FIDE trainer. A very strong uh, grandmaster. Um, this game uh, against Gary Kasparov with the black pieces uh, took place as part of a training match in 1990. Um, and as Kasparov, Kasparov was preparing for his match, his final uh, title match uh, versus uh, Anatoly Karpov. So this was a training match. Uh, it took place uh, in Spain. In uh, Marcia, which is on the, on the eastern coast of Spain, um, as you can see on the map there, and also if you notice, there's a, a book there, the uh, Modern Defense by Asai uh, Lakdawala. It's a good book. I posted the uh, link uh, in the box below. So if you want to uh, purchase that book, help support the channel, be a donation, get the book, or both, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And this game comes from that book. And this is from the chapter uh, on the modern defense where uh, he gives a few examples on how to play against the English um, uh, opening. You know, some players start out with C4 and it's, sometimes it can be difficult uh, because of transpositional possibilities uh, to play against the English. You might end up in an uncomfortable position that you really don't want to be in. Perfect example is if, say, um, against D4, right, you like to play Shigorman's defense, and somebody plays C4, well, it's difficult to transpose into a Shigorman's. Um, you know, the, the opponent with the white pieces basically has to let you transpose into that. Uh, it, it's difficult because after C4, you really can't play D, D5. You can, but it's, it's not good, right? D5... So then if you try to play E6, you're already locking a bishop in on C8, and it can become problematic. So if you're a modern defense player, or you just like some of these lines, uh, um, he gives a good account of Kasparov's approach. And he, he um, gives three games, and this is one of them. And um, I highly recommend this book. So my commentary is going to be loosely based on the notes. Um that uh, international master uh, Lakdawala uh, gives um, here. So uh, enjoy. So let's get to the game. All right. So Sakis began, of course, with uh, the move C4. Um, Kasparov played G6. So we got like this modern uh, opening here, universal opening. Knight C3. Bishop G7, G3, Knight C6 from Kasparov, Bishop G2 from Psakis, D6, Knight F3, E5, D3, F5. So the first thing I want you to notice is that Kasparov has delayed the development of his knight on um, uh, G8. So for example, let's go back. Say after knight f3, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3. Notice how if black is to pursue the same idea, he would have to move the knight on f6, which is typical in your, your king's Indian. 
All right. Here against the English, he doesn't have to do that. He just plays a modern form, and he gets to move f5 in right away. So the um, the game takes on the flavor of a Dutch Leningrad. All right. So f5. All right. And castle. And it's almost like an accelerated uh, Leningrad. Uh, I'm sorry, like an accelerated King's Indian in that black does not have to, you know, move his knight again from, say, from F6 to E7 and then back. He just develops it right to uh, F6. So it's like he has a Leningrad with the extra tempo. Rook B1, typical expansion idea on the uh, queen side of the board. B4, B5, etc. And now here, Kasparov plays H6. Now, this is uh, Lactawala's note. So he, he asked a question, and this is a good format in these, um, in these type of books by Everyman Press. Is, um, use like the Socratic method where they ask you a question, and then you got to try to figure it out. So the question here, he says, why at this moment does Kasparov, uh, Kasparov uh, play the move H6? Why put that in there? All right. So, he says, of course, castling is also fine here, okay, but h6 is useful t for two reasons. One, and I can see, you know, as a long-time Dutch player myself, first of all, it allows you to start expanding on the king side for your attack. But the second reason, all right, because black, of course, is playing in the pawn storm with g5, g4, etc. This is what you want to do in the Dutch. But the other reason is it prevents simplification, um, um, you know, uh, of the position based on, you know, uh, white playing quick bishop g5, trade trade off the knight, etc. Right, so it keeps the tension in the position and also is useful for the oncoming pawn storm. Okay. So, b4. So, basically... Black does his thing on the king side. White is doing his thing on the queen side. Um, a5 is is possible. Okay. Um, uh, Lactawala actually gives that in his notes here. So a5. The, the slow. And this is like always, you know, it depends on the position, right? Sometimes it's useful to, to stop white from um, moving on the queen side. And sometimes it's, it's better just to ignore it. So, so it's one of those, you know, it's based on the, the position, right? I'm sorry I couldn't give you a better answer, but it's, it's usually uh, based on concrete uh, circumstances, all right? So, for instance, A5, A3, castles, now B4, takes, takes, and then H6. B5, Knight E7, Bishop B2, G5. Rook A1, and you can see some trading off on the queen side. Bishop E6, queen A7, and B6. And this happened in um, a game between uh, Grandmaster Lord Van Viley and um, uh, Mavzijian. And this is like, you know, um, uh, equal uh, position here. So A5 is possible, but Kisbarov just played H6. B4, castle, B5, knight E7. And now a4. All right. So here's another question um, by Lakdawali. Says the c5 uh, probably open the queen side. Okay. So just playing c5 uh, straight away. So it says yes, c5 opens the queen side, of course. But black is ready to challenge white on that wing after bishop uh, e6. So for example, c5, bishop e6. Bishop e3, rook c8, queen a4, b6, c takes, c takes, rook fc1, queen comes to d7, bishop to b4. Alright, and again, black, you know, black looks fine here too. So, a4 happened, bishop e6, bishop a3, rook comes to c8. Knight to d2 and b6. All right. Now, uh, here's an interesting note here. He says, this was Spassky's famous closed Sicilian setup 
which he used with colors reversed to clobber Geller with three straight blows to the head in their candidates match. Black curls up in the ball on the queen side, providing white with a single, amply defended target on c7. Meanwhile, black attacks on the other wing. All right. Then it says exercise or homework assignment. Study Spassky's three close Sicilian victories versus Geller from their 1968 match. You will get a great idea of how to handle black in the modern versus uh, uh, Knight of Three English positions. And he's right about that. I've actually looked at those games. I think I've analyzed them on my channel, actually. Um, where during their candidates match, Spassky with the white pieces kept employing the close Sicilian against Geller. And the main takeaway from that match was that you have to take time uh, if you're black to slow white's attack down on the king side. The mistake Geller had made in that match is Geller just went all out on the queen side and he let Spassky go all out on the king side. He never really took too many prophylactic ma um, uh, measures to slow Spassky down, you know, so... You know, of course, that's water under the bridge, but th that's basically the stories of of the story of that match. All right, and so what uh, Lockta Wallace is saying here is that Black's position is similar, you know, and re with reverse colors to that of which Spassky had. Game continued e three. Um, the idea behind e three is, of course, to stop f four, but it also allows White at some point to play. D4 or F4 himself. All right. And actually, um, uh, Lockta Walla mentions here, he says, those Spassky Geller games may have convinced White not to one track mindedly pursue his queen side dreams to the de detriment of his king. So that's exactly what I was saying. If you look at those games, you'll see that uh, Geller believed in his queen side uh, counterplay so much, he kind of ignored his king and he paid for it in that match. G5, here we go. D4. All right. This is old school chess, just basically countering the wing attack with the attack in the center. E takes D4. Um, E4 is possible too. And then white plays F3. Kasparov took. And now F4 continuing the attack. Rook E1. Bishop G4 hitting the queen. Knight F3, Queen D7, and now C5. White must distract Black from the attack or face annihilation. That's uh, Lockta Wallace's notes right there. Rook C E8, Rook C1, and Knight F5. All right, so you can see Black's, uh, you know, is build Black is building up this uh, powerful attack here. Um, you know, and it's looking looking kind of looking kind of scary on the king side for white. Queen d3, king h8, c takes, c takes, bishop takes, I'm sorry, rook takes e8, queen takes e8. All right, so Kasparov, um, as usual, you know, in his younger days, you know, kind of like Tao, was not uh, scared to offer a piece. In the position. All right. Rook F1 was played. How How is the piece being offered? The piece is being offered here. H3. All right. So F takes. H takes G4. Check. Check. Knight G4. Check. King G1. Queen H5. Wow, knight e2, knight g e3, okay, and it's a scary position. I'm not saying white is lost here, but I, I can say that black definitely has some good compensation. So, so you can see why Sockets was like, ah, I'm not going to take the piece. Queen h5, more pressure, and now knight e4, all right, um. Uh, it's, you know, it looks natural, right? Try to trade some pieces, but there's something uh, wrong with this this move. Knight takes e4, queen takes e4, and then Kasparov finds bishop h3. And he's just going to basically 
you know, play old school chess. Remove the fan kettle bishop. All right, and exploit the weakness left on the uh, light squares. All right. There's nothing more to it than that. So, knight e5. All right. Bishop takes g2. King takes g2. All right. And now g4. And the idea is just to entomb uh, white here. So, bishop d6. All right. Rook f6. Powerful move by Kasparov attacking the bishop. Um, another continuation that's winning is just f takes g3. H takes and then coming in with the queen. This one's also due to the fork that after king f1, knight takes g3. But rook f6, bishop b8, and then queen h3. All right. And um, after 30 moves, Pasakis had enough. The reason is, is because he uh, uh going to lose material. So after, say, king g1, f3, there's your, your tomb. Knight takes f3, g takes f3. Queen takes f3, and then knight h4 with this discovered attack against the queen. There's all type of mating ideas in the air. So really the only reasonable move to keep from um, getting checkmated right away is uh, queen h1. You, try, you know, try to keep the queen on the diagonal. Unfortunately, after knight f3, uh, for white, then um, he'll just have to give up his queen for the for the night. So this is why Sakis uh resigned. So um in this book um Laktawala gives three uh two more examples of Kasparov playing this way against the English. One of the games is against uh Lubojevic and I can't remember who the other uh player is, but the setup is the same uh with the black pieces. Um, I guess the key thing to remember is the delay of the knight on f6. Because then you know you might change just transpose into like regular king's Indian. So here um uh Kasparov is um using the reluctance of white uh to really uh contest e4, right? So he can just um delay the development of his knight. And he gets a great uh, reverse cold Sicilian uh, setup against the English. So this style of play appeals to you. This is a great way uh, to begin your games uh, against the English uh, with the move uh, G6. So perhaps on the next video I'll show I'll show another game. You know we'll see what the uh, response. Uh, from this video is and uh, you know we'll show another game in the English also because I know that you know certain openings give certain players more trouble than others and English is is can be one of those openings and pretty annoying and, you know because you have your set repertoire for e4 and d4 and then sometimes these transpositional lines with knight f3 and, and um, c4 can be a little problematic you know for people so this might be a good setup for some people, like I said, I played the Dutch for a long time. Dutch Leningrad, Stonewall, classical Dutch. So this is like right up my alley uh, and playing against um, the English. So hope you enjoyed that video. Um, again, please like, subscribe, all that stuff. But mostly hit that thumbs up button. That's the, that's the button that's going to help um, get my video seen across YouTube. So um, I hope you enjoy it once again. Just click on the links below DVDs. This uh, book is down there. Um, you know, and check it out. You know, it's pretty good. And um, I'll see you guys. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys on the next video.